The moon is a truly mystical celestial body. Hardly any other galactic object is ascribed so many supernatural powers as the constant companion of our blue home planet. In the world of mythology, our Earth moon has played an essential role for many centuries. Just think of the dark legends of werewolves, who according to legend, turn into a bloodthirsty beast every time their eyes meet the glaring light of a full moon. In the following video, we would like to approach the famous Earth satellite from a scientific point of view. We want to show you what we have learned about the moon so far, what exploratory missions have already been carried out by NASA, and what future projects will provide additional information about the nature and characteristics of our natural satellite. As always, we hope you enjoy this exciting topic. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. The Moon, Shape, Size, and Texture While the Earth has a diameter of about 12,742 kilometers, the corresponding value for the Moon is about 3,476 kilometers. With this equatorial diameter, the natural satellite of our home planet simultaneously advances to become the fifth largest satellite known in our planetary system. Although the Earth's moon is considered one of the best explored celestial bodies in space research, the satellite still raises many questions within the scientific community that need to be deciphered in the future. For example, there are currently still large gaps in human knowledge about the history of the moon's formation. What we do know, however, is that the moon needs on average a little more than 27 days to orbit the Earth once completely. As we can see, the Earth Moon always turns one and the same side towards our home planet, which has already led to many myths about the mysterious back of the celestial body, which is always hidden from our view. The satellite does not make its rounds around the Earth in a circular orbit, but rather in a movement that can be described as elliptical. Whoever looks up into the starry sky on a clear night knows that the optical shape of the Moon varies greatly depending on the time of its orbit. Whether the Earth's moon appears to us as a full, complete sphere or as a delicate crescent depends entirely on the phase of the moon in which the celestial body is currently in orbit. Depending on the spatial constellation between the Earth, Sun, and Moon, the satellite appears to us as either a new moon, waxing moon, full moon, or waning moon. In comparatively rare cases, the moon is even completely in the shadow of our blue home planet. This breathtaking natural spectacle is aptly named Lunar Eclipse. Exactly how the Moon came into being is still unclear today. A prominent and widespread thesis says that our primeval Earth might have once collided with the hypothetical protoplanet Theia. As a result of this galactic collision, a large amount of matter is said to have detached from our home planet, from which the Moon subsequently formed. The surface of the celestial body is almost completely covered by regolith. This refers to a material that is also known as moon dust in the vernacular. Because the moon has no atmosphere of its own, meteoroids can hit the outside of the celestial body practically unchecked. During these impacts, large parts of the moon's rock were and still are pulverized, which finally results in the characteristic moon regolith. At the same time, the meteorite impacts ensure that the surface of the Moon has always been adorned by countless craters. Although the Moon is rightly considered an exceptionally dry celestial object due to its dust-covered appearance, some scientists succeeded in the past in making a galactic bang when they were able to prove that there are microscopic inclusions of frozen water on the Earth's Moon. The Moon Landing, a Political Milestone the Earth and the Moon are separated by an average distance of about 384,400 kilometers. During the world-famous Apollo 11 mission, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin succeeded in bridging this distance in about three days. After the men had left Earth on July 16, 1969, 
they reached the moon's orbit on July 19th. When Armstrong, in turn, spoke the legendary phrase, that's one small step for man, but one giant leap for mankind, the international public knew that our species had just succeeded in an extraordinary endeavor. We had actually managed to send the first man to the moon. The successful landing on the moon was not only the great interest of NASA experts at the time, but also represented a significant success for Western civilization. At the time of the moon landing, the world was in the so-called Cold War. This term describes a serious ideological conflict in which the Western states, under the leadership of the USA, were in relentless enmity with the communist countries of the Eastern Bloc. Both parties tried to outdo each other in every conceivable area. With the successful Apollo 11 mission, the United States had successfully proved to the world and its Soviet counterparts that it was the most technically advanced nation on the planet. In the run-up to the moon landing, a technological arms race developed, which was also called the Race to the Moon. The galactic race was followed with great excitement in countless countries. Given this background knowledge, it is not surprising that more than 600 million viewers watched the live broadcast Moon Landing. Lunar Orbiter While many people can still recite the data from the first manned lunar mission in their sleep, many forget that NASA's successful endeavor was by no means the first project in which the natural satellite of our blue home planet was thoroughly examined. A few years before the Apollo 11 mission, the renowned space agency sent several unmanned probes to the immediate vicinity of the moon to gather a wealth of important information about the satellite. The five spacecraft, which were sent to the Earth's moon between 1966 and 1968, pursued the goal of mapping the celestial body in detail. The project, which took place under the name Lunar Orbiter, was also intended to pave the way for the first manned moon landing in the history of mankind. Among other things, the probes were to identify potential landing sites on the celestial body for the Apollo 11 mission. Equipped with several cameras and lenses, Lunar Orbiter 1 left Earth on August 10, 1966 as the first probe of the large-scale mission. In the following years, four more spacecraft were to follow, whose successful flights into space made the world-famous moon landing possible in the first place. During the program, the probes not only produced numerous images of the moon's surface, but also provided mankind with the first photos of our blue home planet from a galactic perspective. Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Following on from the successful lunar orbiter missions of the late 1960s, NASA launched a new moon exploration project in 2009, christened Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. After the unmanned spacecraft reached the moon's orbit on June 23, 2009, it immediately began its large-scale reconnaissance mission, which has not been completed to date. In the following, we would like to introduce you to some breathtaking discoveries made by the NASA spacecraft, which helped us to better understand the natural nature of our constant galactic companion. Water on the Moon As we have already briefly mentioned, in the past, scientists succeeded in proving the existence of water in a frozen state on the moon. A significant part of this sensational find was also the data collected during the lunar missions of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. The corresponding water inclusions are located in particularly cold lunar craters, which experts refer to as cold traps. Temperatures of up to negative 240 degrees Celsius prevail there. Mysterious holes on the lunar surface. Some holes on the surface of the celestial body, called moon pits, still pose great mysteries to scientists. However, the high-resolution images taken by the NASA probe could help to decipher the mystery surrounding the giant craters. The photos show various holes, some of which are larger than 130 meters in diameter. Some experts believe it is possible that the pits were formed as a result of underground volcanic activity on the Moon. The coldest point in the universe. Thanks to a highly complex temperature measuring device, the orbiter succeeded in locating the coldest known point in our solar system. This is located in Hermite, a large crater on the lunar surface, 
which is near the North Pole of the celestial body. The spacecraft's instruments determined that temperatures as low as negative 248 degrees Celsius prevail there. The dark side of the moon? That surface region of the satellite that is turned away from our home planet is also called the dark side of the moon. However, we now know that this widespread nickname has no true core. In fact, the side of the moon that is turned away from the Earth receives as much sunlight as the area that we can admire in the firmament, brightly lit. The topography created by the NASA spacecraft shows in detail the light conditions on the satellite. The Future of Moon Missions As we can see, we could already collect some important information about our constant galactic companion. To further expand our knowledge about the moon, NASA wants to carry out the Artemis III mission in 2024. This is a large-scale project of the space agency, in the context of which a human being is finally to step on the surface of the moon again. Did you like our video about the Earth's moon? Then show us by giving our video a thumbs up. What do you find particularly fascinating about the natural satellite of the Earth? We're already curious about your opinions in the comments. Take care, and we'll see you next time.